Hello, gang. Hello, friends. Hello, gang friends. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this video finds you well. Are you well? I hope you're well. If you're new, hello. My name is Jo and I do nail stuff. She does stuff, nail stuff. And the stuff she does for nails is done with nail stuff and stuff for nails. <sighs> I wanted to do some more Jubilee nails because uh, the next Jubilee, the next big one's a long time away. So let's squeeze another one in. I'm going to do short tips. So these are nails that are my size because I know some of you ask for shorter nail designs. So I'm starting with Madame Glam's Frosty. Look at the bottle for starters. Um, and this is a shh. Stop shouting, okay? This is a, I get very excited talking to you about nails <laughs> this is a hollow blue super fine hollow linear kind of just you can see it's just plain deliciousness and i was going to do five different just random accent nails but i ended up putting this as the background for all of them because i just love it look at that's out of focus well, you can still see how scrum diddly it is. So I've done two coats of that on everything. And now we are taking Madame Glam's Riverwalk, which is a white. It's their perfect white. I love that this is also a super white white, but they're different. I don't know how. One of them, I can't remember which one. You know when you turn the blue light filter off your phone and then when you put it back on... It looks really weird. One of them is more of that kind of white. And anyway, it's a white. And I'm drawing a vertical line down the centre and then one horizontally. We're going to do another Union Jack. I know we did one in the b -b 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 Jubilee video the other day. But you can't do a Jubilee set or Jubilee designs without doing a Union Jack. So I'm going to do this a bit differently. Um, if you do want to more kind of... This is exactly what it should look like. <laughs> look at me. This is exactly what it looks like. I'm not saying my Union Jack was perfect, but I was a bit more pernickety about line placement. Then uh, I'll put a link to the other video in the description. But this one, I'm just taking these diagonal lines out from the center of the cross, which I didn't do on the other one. Stop talking about the other one. It was a different video. I'm taking the diagonals out and then curing everything. And then we're going to use who is she who is she down the bits down the bits down the center and across the center um, instead of a red just because i was feeling because of the frosty i was feeling feeling frosty i was feeling sparkly and more pastel than than an actual union jack so we've gone with this could have done two coats of this um because it's a, a glitter it's not like full opacity but I can be asked so we just left it at one and then um, I will cure this maybe half cure before doing the uh the diagonal lines the diagonal cross is for the white is for Scotland and then the red um normal angled straight on cross is the um, England flag, which is just a red St. George's, the St. George, the St. George's cross on white. And then this red that goes through is part of the Northern Ireland flag. Do they still use it as their flag? I'm not sure if they do. But for some reason, there's no Wales. Um, sorry, Wales. I don't know why. They've got a dragon on their flag. Why would you not want a dragon on your flag? Anyway, but I didn't take those lines right to the centre of the Red Cross because they don't do that. But if you want to, you can. It'll just be wrong. Um, so I topped that <laughs> with Madame Glam's No Wipe Top Coat. And I made sure it was thickish. Oh, there's the one from the other set. I made sure it was thickish to cover any lumps and bumps from all our lines. That was a lot of talking. I had to take a break. This next one, we are doing a post box, a letter box. And I did do a phone box, but it just looked a bit, I don't know, there wasn't really much to it. And it was so small that I couldn't write telephone on it. So it was just a, a red rectangle with white squares. It, it just looked a bit pooper scoop. 
So we're doing a letterbox. So I'm starting with a column down the centre and then giving it a little lid. It looks like a little beret. But I'm doing it in white first because I'm going to put red on top of it. But if I put the red on the blue, which I did try, it did go a lot darker than I wanted it to. So we've given, we're doing it in white first and then we can put the red on top and it will be what it's meant to be. And then I've given it this little hat and then bought the sides of the hat in a diagonal. Did I look at a picture of a letterbox when doing this? No. Um, <laughs> but I've seen a bajillion of them in my life, so hopefully it'll be enough to look like what it's meant to look like. They've got black um, bottoms, black bottoms. They're wearing black trousers and a red top. And then curing the red before doing that black and now I'm going to outline it. I was kind of going for, because it's short, I was going for easy but not boring. So kind of easy but with some detail but I'm not worrying about them being perfect. If I did this on a bigger nail I would go into more detail, I'd love to do some shading and really blah blah blah. But because I didn't have much time I thought let's go for kind of cartoony type I want them to kind of look like little stickers maybe this is just a way of trying to say I'm aware that they're not the neatest and they're not fantastic but I still think they're cute so I'm not I'm not worried that they're not my my best work this sounds awful like I didn't put any any effort at all so I've added a little hole for the letters to go into and then they have this little frame that has the, not opening times, collection and times, um, and then curing that, and I'm going to outline, oh no, not, oh, I'm adding ER. They have the Queen's um, cipher that we did in the last video, This, <laughs> the, but I'm not adding the whole proper thing like we did in the last video, because that took a while. So I'm just doing a little E and an R, adding some dots and some lines just to, I don't know, it doesn't have dots on. We don't have polka dot letterboxes, but I think there's like bumpy raised bits around it. I don't know, but I was kind of thinking this, if you look at it, you know what it is, even though it probably doesn't look exactly like that. I said probably, it definitely doesn't, but there we go. We have a letterbox. Um, that was a lot of fucking rambling, wasn't it? My apologies. Oh, put a letter in there. There we go. Send it on its way. Next up, we are doing Big Ben. Well, it's not called Big Ben. Perhaps I'll bore you with that in a, in a minute. But we're doing what is commonly known as Big Ben. So I'm starting with a, a kind of nudie colour. It's kind of a, a beige, a beige coloured tower. And the top of it doesn't actually go up in a point like well the very top bit does have a little um angled roof roofy bit but it does go up in smaller straight sections but there you go so i'm going to do two coats of that and then we are going to do a big dot for the clock face again this isn't going to be a perfect version of big ben it's going to be recognizable as Big Ben. You will assume it's Big Ben, but if you put it next to the real thing, it, you know, well, don't do that. Don't do it. <laughs> so I'm going round the circle with a square in a darker brown, and then I will, I messed up my, I didn't do a very good circle, but we know that I'm, I'm not, I'm not, me and circles, we just don't get on very well. They don't like me. I kind of have a bit of contention towards them. Dots on the other hand, tiny dots, we love dots. But now we're going to add some lines and some little sort of dashes just to kind of imply detail. It's not really intricate detail, but we'll just imply it. We'll pretend it is. So I'm doing little dashes and then some longer ones. And then I think I was flash curing as I went, just as so as not to worry about doing the next step wrong and then having to wipe and redo and I'm adding some little lines here just making this bit up the top, the top doesn't look like that um shall I tell you why oh, well I'm going to add little lines and then 
I will do, I will outline it again and then we'll add some little clock hands and some little dashes in between the clock hands. So it's not actually called Big Ben. The bell, well, the big main bell that dongs, bing, 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 Ben. Big Ben dongs every quarter of an hour, I think, to signify o'clock, quarter past, half past and quarter two, and it's a different amount of dongs per one. Is that what they're called? Dongs? Yeah. Dong. So Big Ben is actually the name of the big bell, um, which is, I think, like 13 and a half tons, which is a pretty heavy bell. Wouldn't want to be standing underneath that if it fell. So but Big Ben, the actual tower, well, in, in 2012, I think it was. Yeah, it must have been because it was for her 60th Jubilee. It was the name of the tower was changed to Elizabeth Tower for the like to commemorate the queen's 60 year reign before that it was when it was first built it was was it the king's tower i think then and then it was something else i think it's mostly known as the clock tower by those um who work at the house of parliaments and things or just in in uh, westminster westminster you going westminster no i'm going east westminster um, but yeah, it's now called Elizabeth Tower because the first Houses of Parliament, or like Parliament Halls, were built in, now, let's go back to history class, 10, 16, maybe? I'm adding clouds just to imply that it's tall. Uh, yeah, 10, 16, I think. And then it was demolished by fire, not the Great Fire of London. That was 1666. It was demolished in 18-something, and then it was rebuilt. Uh, that's boring. Stop boring people, Joseph. We've added some clouds. We've outlined and we've added clouds. Oh, did I add a little cross on top? There's some kind of spire majig on top. But even though, like I say, it doesn't... If you held it up, not so much like Big Ben, but it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Am I fooling myself? I think. I think it's fine. I'm from England. I say it's fine. Therefore, it's fine. Oh, what are we doing now? Now we are going to do... Oh, we're going to do a little Queen's Guard, a Royal Guard. So again, I'm going to put white down before doing the red of his jacket. And I've given him some slanty, sh slanty shoulders. And then arms straight down because they're very rigid. And then at the top of that, we'll do a little flat bit in the middle at the top and then I'll cure that and go over it with red. Some of my favourite videos I've ever seen are of, no offence to anybody, but are of tourists watching the Royal Guards because they move, they have a very strict traditional job. They have orders, they have to move in certain ways, they have certain paths to follow and nothing can get in their way. You can't, you know, they're not going to step aside for someone with a fucking camera. No, they're the Queen's Guards and they very loudly announce if someone's in the way by screaming, Make way for the Queen's Guard! And if you don't get out the way, well, it's fucking tough, really. They're just going to trample over you. And they're some of my favourite videos. People, tourists, not necessarily foreign tourists, just tourists in, in general. Getting in the way of the Royal Guards. Oh, you have to Google, 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 Google eyes. YouTube, you're on YouTube already. Not yet. Wait till the end of this video. But have a look at some of the videos. They're amazing. Young, old, toddlers, the elderly. If you're in the way, you're getting marched over. They have to stay on that path respect it if someone came and sat on my desk when i was trying to work i'd certainly kick them out of the way anyway um i think it's hilarious and i love it especially oh i'm adding i added a little collar sorry i'm not talking about nails am i i'm going off on one um i added a collar and then curved the top of it that little sort of black bar in a kind of u shape and then we're going to add a little face here we're not going to add features or anything might give him a chin strap later and then some yellow this 
yellow is called Fifth Avenue from Madame Glam. I don't know if I've mentioned already that you can use code Miss Joe 30 for a whopping 30% off at Madame Glam. Give him some buttons. I made sure that line on his jacket, the black one, was just off center so that we could put some buttons down the side. And now we're going to add their big black fluffy hats, <laughs> which is essentially a rectangle with a curved top there we go it's nice and easy and then I did think I think I I think I made it a little bit wider than his face just so it looked I don't know big and floofy I did think about maybe pulling out some little while the black we're doing here is wet just flicking some bits out to give kind of a fluffy effect but I don't think it really suited the the style of what what I was going for uh, have you seen one of these videos I was talking about a girl because lots of people try and get a reaction out of um, Queen's guards and they never do and there was a girl who threw her glove at one of them and he and she asked for it back and he doesn't doesn't bat an eye he doesn't look at her he just does his job and she was obviously not sure about stepping over them because it was a roped off section. And then a tour guide, I think, came along and uh, gave her her glove back only after a stern explanation of why she shouldn't have done it. And I think he was essentially just calling her a bit of a rude, disrespectful twat. Who throws a glove at someone anyway? What, is she challenging him to a duel? She would lose. But there you go. Uh, I do I do just take pleasure in watching people try to do those things and getting walked over or stomped out. Oh, look, here's a very realistic representation of such an event. And then there's the guard inside his head just... <laughs> I just enjoy things like that. Instant karma is what I enjoy seeing. So now our little guard man... That's not a very good way to describe one of them. <laughs> what do you do? I'm a little guard man. <laughs> They're actually um, soldiers, they're infantry and cavalry soldiers. They're not just finely dressed gentlemen, they're trained professionals um, carrying deadly weapons, which is not something you see in the UK, but they have them because don't fuck with the Queen. Right, that's enough rambling about the Queen's guard. So we're now going to do a teapot. I've done a flat-bottomed circle so not a circle <laughs> I've done a circle with a that's been anyway flat bottom circle and then a little kind of nipple on top mm, I don't like that I just said that and then a spout and then we will do a handle on the other side I'm a little teapot short and stout here's my handle here's my spout when the what Something, when the water's boiling, some, pour me out, no, something, something, lift me up and put, anyway, we've done a teapot and I was going to do it in red, which is why I did it in white first, but then I decided to do it in blue. I kind of wish I'd done the whole thing in red, white and blue, maybe stripey or tried to make it into a Union Jack teapot, but I, I wasn't happy with the fact that I was doing a teapot anyway, so... I, I didn't want to give it too much attention. So I've gone over the body in blue and then we'll do the little um, little knob. Mm, that's even worse. <laughs> Knobs and nipples. A little bit on the top that you lift the lid off with and the spout and the handle. We'll do that in red. And then I'm going to outline everything and write the number 70 on the body of it. Yeah, I'm just not happy with this one. I just think it's a bit shit. Or oh, we're doing some little steam coming out of the spout. Am I right? Or have I asked this before? In some countries, I think in the US, it's uncommon to have a kettle, like an electric kettle. So you have to put it on the hob and boil water that way, I suppose, considering they don't drink as much tea as us. It's probably not that big of a deal. Wait, what if you want a cup of coffee? No, you probably have a coffee machine. Anyway, we have 
kettles over here. Teapots like this. You do make tea in teapots like this, but you boil the water in a kettle first because who can be asked to wait for it to boil on the hob? But I think it's because... I'm boring you again, aren't I? I think it's because of something like the volts or watts or I don't know. I don't, I don't know anything about electric stuff, but isn't strong enough to power a, to boil a kettle quickly or quicker faster than a hob would in the US whereas over here full kettle put the switch down it's done in like a minute less than anyway there's an exciting story about kettles for you here is our car oh that's my favorite one our little cartoony UK UK-ish Buckish, that's not a nice word. Um, they're kind of mainly British, actually. Apologies. Uh, things of staples. I hope you like them. Let me know which one is your favourite. If you do like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you being here so, so much. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.